What up, though? Telephone bill. Tell him, Boosie. He was too funky to play for James Brown. James Brown was like, you are too funky. So he had to go to Funkadelic. I want to say Pac sampled this. My block or some shit like that? Black I can't talk over this. I just want to listen. What up, y'all? Just living in a loving. Yep, my block. I wasn't lying. Wait. Oh, I guess he didn't do that. Type in what's your telephone bill. I want to see what he sampled. Now I got to see. Hold on a second. I would put you up on the on you white folks on game, but fuck you or some shit. Straight balling on my fucking computer. I swear, I hate this fucking computer, man. I'm going to play it off of YouTube. So now you can hear what I'm talking about. I, I know he's all over the place today. Fuck you. We're having fun. That was a, yeah. That's what I was talking over. That boozy sampled. Yeah, we found it together, guys. Good job, everyone. Good job, team. John, thanks for looking it up for me because I was fucking stuck. And uh, good job to me for finding it on YouTube. And fuck my computer for not having it on there. And now I'm going to start talking over this fucking Eddie Hazel. Oh, we got a show for you today. Get Cultured, DJ Matthew, part two. It's my man, DJ Matthew. He comes on, he plays his different world music, old 70s soul, just kind of puts us up on game, music you might not have heard, tells you a bit about it. I want you to be a better person listening after you listen to all my dick jokes and fucking shitting on John. I want you to feel like, hey, I'm better. This is Eddie Hayes, a little California Dreaming cover, by the way. This is a dude I played for Face. He's a... Uh, Play for Funkadelic. I'm gonna stay on that Funkadelic tip. Turn that shit up, hold up. We got a movie star coming in today. Eric Bana's gonna be here, which is cool. He's on. He's in one of my all-time favorite movies, top 20 movies. Don't look at him, John. Always, I, 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 I gotta look at somebody when I'm talking. It's and confusing. It's, top 20. Top 20 movies. Guess what movie? What do you, what movie do you think it would be? Top 20 movie. Eric of Eric Bana is in. You you don't know that that, that Pee Wee movie. Look, he's in everything, bro. Munich, Black Hawk Down. I don't know, man. And all that shit. He's in Chopper, bro. Fucking Chopper. You never seen Chopper? I think so. Chopper's about Chopper's the shit. If you guys like gangster flicks, it's a, it's a good one. It's about a fucking uh, it's about an Australian biker. True story about this Australian biker named Chopper. You know I'm picking his brain on that shit. We're doing what would you do? I'm culturing y'all motherfuckers. We got a we got a story of a good parent and a bad parent. We'll talk about good and bad parenting in the news. I'm an expert. Fucking listen to the deadbeat dad about the fucking parenting. He was in Troy. Played Hector. My man Tone out there. He knows what's up. My man Tone. He's gonna fucking co-sign this goddamn song. Sometimes you guys will be like halfway, like I don't know, do I like it? And then someone will call. I, I I have to. I can't just. I just can't play you the dopeness. I can't just be like. Just. I just can't play you this. Tone, what up though? Yo. How you doing, man? I'm all right, man. Hey, oh, this dude? Yeah. Hey, man. You made my day, dog. We getting hammered down here in Jersey. And I'm a true funketeer, man. I just, I just went and seen um, uh, all of the funkadelic at BB King's the Marty Gras tour no for shit. my birthday. Yeah, so you already know it was uh, the 16th, man. And I'm, man, I, I've been, I was at the uh, Garden in '77, 14 years old when they landed the mother ship. Oh, that's oh, bro. I, I've been I was, dipped in the funk. Oh, all right, you already know. So I was born in '77, so I wouldn't even there for it yet. I, man, I even, but look, you know, hey, listen to me. Just because you wasn't around, you got the funk, dog. You got the funk, man. For real, for real. Tell these motherfuckers. I've tried to tell them that motherfucking Eddie Hazel, that Boosie Collins. Hey, yeah, and yeah. not just Eddie Hazel, man. Mike Hampton, Maggot Brain. Oh, Maggot Brain's a motherfucker. That's uh. What about March Witch's Castle? <laughs> well, say that. Say that one again. March to the witch's castle. March to the witch's castle. I'll peep that one. I'm not yeah. See, see. All see. right, and another one. Oh my baby, this pussy. P U S S Y. I know that one. Farmer Tom got in the tub. My little gray pussy scratching on my back with a claw. That was a. I, I, I used to get. Yeah, I used to huh? get a lot. I, I used to get very high to that song. The very, very, oh yeah, that's what's up, man. That's what's very, up, very man. high tone. Man. All right, that's my man Tone. He cosigns. He cosigns. All right, we're gonna play some music. Come back with what would you do? Look at that.
And then after that, Eric Banner. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You are checking out the All Out Show with Rude Jude on demand. got a problem in your life you need to talk to somebody talk to me i am a problem solver i will help you out i will coach you people go to fucking shrinks they go to life coaches you don't need that shit just holler at me i'll give it to you i'll give you that raw uncut od on the truth have you laid the fuck out like truth problems with your girl call up problems with your guy holler at me Problems with your parents, problems with your kid, any of that shit. Problems at your job, dickhead coworker, I'll help you. Answer to that one is just breathe. Just fucking breathe, man. Works easy, people's hard. Ain't that the truth? Call me up right now. 888-742-3345. 888-742-3345. I'm here to help you. I'm here. I care about you, but not so much that I'm afraid that we won't be friends. And you're going to respect what the fuck I say, because I'm coming I'm coming with that fucking raw. 888-742-3345. Man, I've been playing the fuck out this peasy shit. So I'm going to play more peasy shit. Here's, uh, here's Bankroll with Lou Graham in the middle. Babyface Ray and Peasy bookend the shit. Here it is. Shade 45. Shade 45. What up, though? 888 Call me up if you got a problem. We got Jasmine calling from Detroit. What's up, Jasmine? Hi. Um, I'm having an issue. My parents don't give me any privacy. Your parents won't give you any privacy? No. Like, I, they always ask me, where am I going? Who am I going with? All that. How old are you? 23. Oh. And you, I'm. I take it you still live with them. Yes, I do. Well, so what this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna come up with a plan for you. Okay. Okay. You got a job. Yes. What are you doing with your money? Um, I save it. I pay my own car note. I pay my own bills. You my got a own car note. Bill, health insurance. Yes. Why you got a car? Why you got a car note? I have a 2016 car. Oh, it's a luxury. <laughs> it's a luxury item for a 23-year-old. I know a little bit, yes. No, I mean, a lot of bit. It, so. it doesn't fucking... No, you don't, because you're living at your parents... You're living You're living at your folks' house. You're 23, and you're still in your folks' house. Mm-hmm, right. So, uh, so just, the, the here's the trade-off. You get to drive around a nice car... But you got to answer to your parents, so you're not all the way free. Right. Um. So. I mean, but it's it's not like the car is free or anything. I got to pay for it with my money. But congratulations! Like Ooh, wow, wow, big girl, look at you <laughs> making dumb decisions with your money. Car note at twenty three. What what's your car note? What are you paying? Two fifty. And then your insurance is what? You're in Detroit, so it's high as hell. Right. Yep. For good reason. Look, you you look. <laughs> you need to get a roommate. You need to get yourself get a plan and a roommate. Cause guess what? You don't like your parents telling you asking you all those fucking questions. Get the fuck out of the house. You're old. You're, come on, man. You're old as hell. 
Okay. Get you a roommate. Rent's cheap in the D. Get a couple roommates. Okay, fucking bunk up. Go, you know, eat fried egg sandwiches, ramen noodles. Tough it out. <laughs> then you can go wherever the fuck you want. You go wherever you want. Your parents can't tell you shit. And you'll, you will you don't even under, understand how, you don't even know how good it feels. Because you don't, you don't, you don't know the difference. You're a right. kept, you're kept, you're a kept person right now. Right, okay. You I know what that. I mean? You, 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 you want right. to feel that freedom? Freedom comes at a cost. Yes. You, right. you, you got to pay for that shit. Freedom ain't free. You got to pay for that shit. So get you a little plan. Start save, Start budgeting your money. I don't even know. I don't even know what to do about the fucking car. I don't know, sell it. Slang that bitch and then get a fucking cheap car. <laughs> you don't want to get a cheap car, do you? You 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 like driving no, around in a I nice little car. Cheap cars. I need Texas cars. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I don't know, man. I it's, it's fun. You're you're. I didn't, I didn't, I, I didn't start leasing until I was fucking damn 30, 37 and well into 35 and had it and had a fucking way better job than you. Okay. I, I was driving a fucking 93 Altima. Oh my God. Yeah. Get, yeah. Guess, you know why? Cause I wanted to be on, I, I'd been on my, I've been living on my own since I was 17. My mom can't tell me a fucking thing. I wish my dad would try to tell me some shit. You're kept. They can tell you whatever the fuck they want. You're under their house. And it's not even like you come from an expensive place. Michigan's cheap as fuck, girl. Yeah, I know. All right, boss up. <laughs> huh. Okay. I'm going to You don't even know this shit, but I'm going I'm, I'm, I'm to... Here, look. I'm going to put on this... I'm gonna put this little. I'm gonna. This is this is a little. I want you to fucking just listen to this. Just a little piece of this. Would you boss the fuck up? This is for you. You you're from Detroit? Come on, what's wrong with you, girl? Would you boss the fuck up? I'm being nice. Boss up. You need to get the fuck out your parents' house. You you help out with groceries? Yes. Oh, look at Oh, you help out with groceries. All right, so you're not a, all the way a piece of shit. Okay, so fucking look. <laughs> get the fuck out of there. Go. All right? Six months. Give yourself a get, get, give yourself a plan. Holler at some of your girls. Get, give your, get yourself a little fucking plan. Go move somewhere on the west side. Where you? What, what part of Detroit are you in? On the west side. Yeah, yeah stay on the west. Don't go to the east. <laughs> if you want to keep that car, <laughs> stay on the west side. Be, just fucking go get it. For fuck's sakes, get the fuck out of your parents' house. Priscilla and Boss in the, in the Bronx. Priscilla. Yo, Joe. What up, though? What's up? Yo, I got a man. He doesn't appreciate me. What the fuck should I do? The dick is the bomb. Dick's good, but he he he, he dogs you? Yo, he got a devil dick. Is that a fuck boy, pretty much. You, me and you got fuck boy. Fuck, to me, fuck boys mean dudes who get fucked. He's a fuck boy. He get, he's gay? No, Julie, the, uh, the sex is the bomb. I don't understand. But I feel like I'm not being appreciated. Well, then leave. I always say leave? this. Yeah, good pussy won't keep me, but a bad pussy will make me leave. Good That's pussy up. good pussy will not keep me, but if the pussy's whack, I'm out the door. That's a prerequisite. You gotta, you gotta, you need to hire your standards. I think you're right, Drew. I do need to hand them higher my standards yeah yeah you demand you demand the respect that you get and if you don't get it then you fucking keep it moving all right thanks you you're the best you got it so fucking well you know she was uh 
I don't. I don't know. I'm not gonna shit on any more callers. You're you're the one, you're fucking <laughs> you're fucking some guy that, that right. that's cheating on you. So so you're not any better, Priscilla. I know. Sucks, right? Probably fucking. He's fucking all of South Bronx. <laughs> <laughs> Dicks all over the South Bronx. Like fucking. <laughs> what up, man? They don't got your name on here. What's what was what was the guy's name? On nine, you got a check mark. Yo, yo, what's up, man? What's your name? Will. What's your problem, Will? Yeah, I got a problem with this bitch. Okay, it's a problem with bitch. Every fucking week, every, every week the bitch wants to pick me up the fucking house. I pay the fucker, I pay her the rent that she asked me to pay her for, and I give her what she wants. I, I treat her like fucking gold, and I get kicked out every fucking week. So you're with a woman that's not stable. You think? Sounds like you. Where do you go when you get kicked out the crib? I don't. What you just sleep in the car? I sleep on the couch. Oh, she puts you in a. Why are you? Why are you guys fighting? Tell me what are you fighting about? Just out of curiosity. I mean, it's just. I have no idea. It's just she just comes home. She just has a fucking attitude. She just runs her fucking mouth, and I don't take it. And. There she goes, running her mouth, telling me to get the fuck out. So I said, fuck it. Man, I think you should, uh... She, she, I think she, goes, she goes to her room, takes a bath, goes to bed, I sleep on the couch, watch TV all day. You ain't got no kids with her, do you? No, nah, she's got two kids, dude. What are you uh, doing? How old are you? She's got two kids. She's got two kids. Out of, I'm 40, uh, 41, she's 46. I don't know, bro. Is this what you want for your life? Not really. That's what I'm saying. I, right. I'm about to get the fuck out. Yeah. I mean, she asked me to pay two hundred dollars a week when I moved in five, six months ago. So that's eight hundred dollars a month. How much is rent? Right. Her, her, uh, she, she bought the house. It's uh, twelve hundred dollars a month. So she, she's, she's making a profit off of you and and paying her equity. <laughs> You're a chump. Thanks, man. <laughs> Get the fuck out of there. And she's dogging you? Yeah. And don't let her call the cops, because guess who, guess who they're going to take away? Me? You, motherfucker. Yeah. She, she, she's already threatened to call the cops, but I've been there five, six months. I mean, she can't evict me without 30-day notice, right? Bro, get your money up and get the fuck out. I'm you, trying. You sound like I'm John. <laughs> Shut the fuck up. You sound like now. John. <laughs> Is this John? Is this redneck John calling? Fucking. I guess that's why he kept me on the phone, huh? Yeah, man. Get the fuck. He's 42 years old. I thought I thought I was going to talk to like a fucking 20-year-old. Get the fuck out of there. I, I've got to go. You're getting dogged by some fucking menopause lady. You think? Uh, I think. I know. And she's making money off your dumb ass. Yeah. You couldn't even negotiate a better deal than that. I'm trying, and then, then I'm trying to make this shit work, but mm. and trying to trying to make it uh, negotiate a better price. It was, but she just runs her fucking lip too goddamn fucking. She much. got you on some motherfucker. She got she you. Lucky, on... She's lucky I don't lay my hands on females. Yeah, right, she lucky she got you in some panties. <laughs> Man, shut she, up. You Fredericks of Hollywood right now, bro. She got you in some motherfucking panties. Yeah. <laughs> fucking paying 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 most of her mortgage. Yeah. Damn, and sleep and getting cussed out all the goddamn time, bro. One Talk. minute, one minute is the nicest damn bitch in the world, and the next minute she's the biggest bitch in the world. You're you're an abused spouse. Get out of there, man. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Fucking lame. MJ in San Antonio. Man, I'm a I'm a bounty hunter here in Texas, man. I got a fugitive I've been looking for, and uh, I end up giving his sister my number and she tells me that uh the only way she'll tell me where he is if i sleep with her and i'm just trying to get your opinion on what you think i should do how she look how does she look um, oh, um, man, she's like a four dude she's a four look man like a four man bro i've done some i've done some really gross things to further my career with women just so you know. Like, okay. <laughs> uh, that's what, like, these hoes are, like, are trading fucking, like, giving up pussy for, like, million-dollar parts. I don't feel bad for them at all. 
Like these, the, you you are you entered into a trade. Um, so fucker, wear a condom. Wear a condom. So you say go ahead and fucker. Do you how much you how much money are you gonna get if if you bring them in? Yeah, this dude got a uh, fifty thousand dollar bun, man. So what do you what do you get ten percent of that? Yeah. Five G's to fuck a ugly broad. <laughs> Pretty much. All right, you're a whore. He's like, we all are dude, in some man, ways. Might, might have to put a bag over that bitch face, dude. Just eat some fucking Viagra and just go in. Make tell her to I wash up because it's, it's for me. It's harder to get past the smell than the looks. Yeah, man. When I interviewed her, man, her breath, man, that shit was kicking me in my face. Yeah, get some, yeah. Well, yeah, tell her to take a shower and give her some Altoids. <laughs> I appreciate that knowledge, man. BellRecovery.net. Thank you. There you go. BellRecovery.net. He will fuck you. And then I can't believe she'll fuck over her own brother for some dick. That's how some of these bitches are, man. Damn, that, that bitch ain't shit. Damn. Ike in uh, Dallas. What's up with it, Joe? Man, you got it. What's your problem? Man, uh, I got the situation, bro. Uh, like a few years back. Uh, man, my homeboys was running around. We got into some trouble. Three of them got sent to the penitentiary, man. And uh, when one of them got out, you know, I had uh, found the gun that they used in the case, you know, but the police officers never found it. So when I found it, the first thing I did was sold it. So when one of my homeboys got out of jail, he was mad that I sold the gun. And, you know, man, him really fell out bad behind that, man. And uh, I was just trying to get your opinion, man, on if you think I was wrong or not. What did he want you to do? Destroy the gun? Nah, he wanted me to save the gun and give it back to him when he got out. Give him half but the money. The sa- but this is the same gun that they were using, you know, in the case and that the police was looking for. I don't know. That sounds ridiculous. This is one of those. I don't think you're going to be able to like rational, be rational with this guy. Uh-huh. Sounds like he's, and I'm sure he's mad about a lot of shit. Yeah. And he's using the gun as a point of contention. But you don't think that I was wrong, you know. You said, I thought I was being a good homeboy, you know, get rid of it. Did you give him the money? Nah, man, I, I kept the money for oh. myself. But oh. the thing, the thing about homeboy. it is, when I tried to hit him up, you know what I'm saying? The girl that he was talking to at the time, he told her, don't let nobody get in contact with him. You ain't putting nothing so on I his books? I didn't have no way to get in contact with him when he was in jail. You ain't putting nothing on his books, nothing, huh? Nah, but look, when he got out, man, the first thing I did was went to his house and I gave him $100, you know what I'm saying? Well, and how I was much you selling get for, drugs at the time. How much you get for the gun? And when he first, huh? How much you get for the gun? I got 150 all right, look. So, all right, so you basically gave him what you gave him. There you go. You gave him money. Yeah, I gave, I gave, yeah, you know what I'm saying? And then I had went and bought his daddy, you know what I'm saying? Some cigarettes and all of that shit, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, but yeah. he went on Facebook, man, and made this big old post and made this big old scene after the fact, you know? Look, man, here's the deal. Usually, uh, I think he's mad that he went to jail. Yeah. And you didn't. I think that's yeah, 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 yeah. I think he's mad that you went to jail, or that he went to jail and you didn't. And yeah. uh, this this one might be a relationship that you can't salvage. Oh yeah, man. I I'm not I'm not looking to I'm not looking to. I was just trying to make sure, like, man, I know I ain't tripping. Was I in the wrong? Uh, you I don't know, think. Yeah. But... What's it? What's he gonna do? Come back out of jail with his fucking with a hot gun? I know, man. You that's the same thing I fucking said, man. Like, what the fuck do you expect to do, man, with a with a with a gun that they looking for? <laughs> Dog, your boy. Look, it sounds to me like you don't need this guy as a friend. He sounds like a fucking moron. Oh yeah, man. Yeah, 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 man. I did not already exit the mouth of life. You know what I'm saying? But I'm just trying to make sure I hit up Jew, man. Make sure Jew. No, you know? I co-sign this. Don't fuck with him. He's a fucking moron, and he's mad, and that's a bad mix. Dumb, yes, sir. Yes, sir. dumb and angry. You don't, you don't want that. And he probably been fucking duck walking all through the yard. Probably all <laughs> swollen shit. Fucking leave him alone. Yeah. Leave him alone. Let him talk shit on Facebook. Ignore it. 
I got you, man. Thank you for the advice, Jude. Peace. Uh, John, man, I fuck with him, even though everybody be on his ass, man. I fuck with y'all show every single day, bro. Appreciate you, man. Appreciate you. All right, I'm going to play a song and then come back and uh, play some more um, or do some more What Would You Do? And then we're going to have Eric Banner. 888-742-3345. This goes out to that girl that needs to move out of her fucking mom's house. All these rappers rapping about how they got that work. How the fuck you niggas working when you always at work? Boy, with y'all, I ball like them cats at Ruckus. The streets and then with the rims of tent. Wood grain staring with a master scenes in the fence. We bout dollars. Makes sense, don't it? Coops with the six on it. Rugers with the info. We'll blaze you if you run up on us. It's Mr. Lee, I and Coca. And I'm the mayor of the mitt. Y'all niggas ain't boss enough. Y'all bullshit. Boy. All right, man. Hey, today, 7423345. Call up right now. It is What Would You Do? I'm here to help you out with your life. 888-742-3345-V in Fort Knox. What's up? What's your problem? Hey, dude. So I'm fucking this 27-year-old. I'm 35. And he. I, I told him straight up. I said, I just want to fuck. Suck and fuck. That's it. I don't want to be emotionally attached. I don't want you to take me out. I don't want you to spend any money on me. I don't want to go anywhere with you. Period. Right? You let him so, say the night? Huh? Do you let him stay the night? Well, I go to his house. Do you stay the night? I, yeah. Take your ass home. I do. I did last Good. night because he was like, oh, ooh. but no. should I continue to let him fuck me or should I just like cut it loose? Because his dick is great and it feels great. It tastes great. It's awesome. and it's great. I'm like, he loves me and I don't. <laughs> I don't love him. What do I do? Besides, go home. <laughs> Here's the problem. The problem is, is like, how often do you see him? Uh, pretty much every other day. And that's the other thing. I want to fuck every day. V, like, I, I said, v, stick on demand. V, shut up. What? You sound, you're, you're <laughs> fucking, you're, look, come on now. Listen to you. You see a motherfucker every other day. You're staying the night at his house. You're telling, you're giving him all these signals. That, 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 that's a relationship. You're that's in a relationship. Cool, V, you're being selfish. Yeah, I I can be selfish. No, I was you are for selfish. Years and I'm divorced. I know you're if being I selfish. Want dick, you know, you're being selfish. So you wouldn't want a bitch that just only wants to suck and fuck. I wouldn't want you over at my house every other fucking day. That's a girlfriend. And you act no, like it's not. Yes, if it I is. Up Shut up. Night. Shut up. It is. <laughs> if I got to see your ass every other fucking day, you're my fucking girlfriend. You you might not, you show up every other day. You're mm -hmm. his girl. The fuck you think this oh. is? Yeah, and you stay the night. Oh, I just want yeah. dick. Look, you were damaged from your fucking divorce. I get it. You're fucking hurt and all that shit. Kids probably <laughs> fuck. I don't know. That I've I, never had good dick. My my ex husband was a two pump chump, and he had a small dick. This dude, he has a he, his dick game is strong. So. I don't yeah, know what to tell you, man. I'm, I'm, I'm telling you that you're give, you've okay. give, you've given him all of the fucking, you, you're giving him all of these fucking signals that you guys are together, and then you're like, but I don't want to be together. Damn. So will I never find anybody that just wants to just fuck and not have anything more? Like, yo, dude. Like I mean, I, probably like if you somebody that's usually like that is usually like me. I'm a guy that just fucks once every ten days. Because I'm fucking other girls. Ah, so I don't have okay, time okay. to fuck just you. You see what I'm saying? You got to find yeah. somebody that's fucking other girls. That's that, you know, and you're not going to get dick as much, but you, you're, you won't have somebody fucking attached. <laughs> you seen the dude every other day. What do you expect? He got to, of course he's going to get fucking attached. Oh, okay. All right. You broke oh. this one. There's, there's good dick out there. There's, there's good dick out there. <laughs> okay, well, thank you. <laughs> Bye. Bye. For fuck's sakes, man. Not a lot. You can't do all of these things that signal a relationship and then be like, we're not in a relationship. Every other day? When I had a girl, I didn't even see her that much. Dana in Philly. Hi, you. What up, girl? 
Hello? Go ahead, man. You on, Dana? Go ahead. All right, dude. Um, so my husband left me about two years ago, and um, he's been trying. Our communication is horrible. We haven't divorced, but it's going on three years now, and I'm trying to decide whether I should get a divorce or not. You, you and your husband are in a bad relationship for the last three years? Well, we were married for 10. He left me about two and a half years ago. And um, Came back? We never... No, no. So just get a divorce. <sighs> well... What are you waiting on? I, I'm having a problem bringing it up. I thought that he was going to bring it up because he's the one left me. But he, when I bring it up, he gets upset. And he, like, gets tearful and stuff. So he left you and then he cries about a divorce? <laughs> You got kids with this guy? Well, not together, no. Well, good. You have some bitch-made children. <laughs> Fucking dump him. He's so, tying you up, dude. Just, just tell him I want a divorce, and if he cries, he cries. Yeah. He ain't even living with you. That's true. He's been gone for two years. What is he? What the fuck? Yeah, it's over. Don't you want? I just don't know how to bring it. I don't know how to bring it up because he's going to get upset and cry. Just deal with the tears. Watch his bitch ass cry in front of you, and tell him to go back to it wherever he's living. Okay, I'm a big fan, dude. Thank, Thank you. you. You know why he's crying? Because he doesn't want to give you half his shit. That's why he's crying. No, he doesn't want me. To, I got to give him half. I got the house. So lawyer up. That's the problem. Lawyer up. You'll be fine. All right, thank you. Bye. Is that it? We good? All right, that was what would you do? Thanks everybody for calling up. Sorry, uh, sorry, I couldn't get to you, Jeff and John and Erica. We'll be back with Eric Banner. You are checking out the All Out Show with Rude Jude on demand. Site 45, we are here with the motherfucking movie star Eric Banner. What's up, man? How's it going? Thanks for having me. It's good to have you on here. You're 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 in one of my favorite movies of all time. So Which one? You want to guess? Uh, the Castle. How'd you know? <laughs> How did you fucking know? <laughs> That's what John guessed too. John guessed, John guessed the one with you and Ricky Gervais. Ah, uh, special correspondence. Yeah, I didn't. Yeah, I didn't see that. That was that was a comedy too, right? Yeah, 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 on Netflix. And that that's what you started off doing. That's right. Yeah, uh, started out in Australia as a stand up, and then went into sketch comedy, and then uh, came in through the side door into into drama. Chopper. Yeah, that was the one. I saw that motherfucker on DVD. I was like. Back in the day, you saw it. Like, I, I saw yeah. that shit when it dropped, bro. Really? Yeah, man. That was the that was the motherfucking. That was like that low key underground. Hey, you know about Chopper? Like right, that was right, right. Do you still get motherfuckers talking to you about Chopper? Yeah. Is, I look. It's is it's, it annoying? No, because I realized at the time it's it's a that sort of character is pretty rare, once in a lifetime, maybe twice if you're lucky. So you just got to go with it, you know. Like it's a privilege if someone remembers anything you do. Aside from being naked somewhere, so I figure that's a good thing to be known for. Yeah, who's that one motherfucker from Lord of the Rings that had to do the fist fight butt ass naked in some movie? I forgot. I forgot. Some. Some. He was just known for doing like a fist fight butt naked. Just and you know your dick goes inside of you when you're fighting too, so it's not like it looked impressive. It did not. But do you feel like that kind of took you out of comedy and push pushed you in the dr the drama? Yeah, I definitely it opened a lot of doors for sure. Um, and when I came here, people were kind of like scared to meet me. They didn't know like who to get, who, who was coming. They didn't know anything about my comedy background. So for a while, I was like, I had two existences. I was like, in Australia, I was only known for comedy, and here I was only known for for serious stuff. And they kind of refused to believe that I did comedy in Australia they're like what the fuck are you doing doing the serious yeah, stuff yeah oh, then you were like you Black are? Hawk Down and all this <laughs> other shit you went straight you were drama man and yeah. fucking actually like a lot of tough guy shit what, why why I've noticed this and you tell me you tell me your opinion I, and I want you to be honest why do you think w w Hollywood imports so many Australians to do tough guy shit I don't know. It's a good question. The only thing I can think of is that um, we make all our mistakes in private at home. 
And so when we arrive here, we're like we're like you know an uh, advanced form of a species of ourselves. And so no one has pigeonholed us. No one goes, "You're that idiot that was on a soap ten years ago," or "You're that idiot who did sketch comedy." Like, it's so a lot of the mistakes or embarrassing stuff really? that we've done is kind of like we've done it at home. So we kind of. Um, we're only viewed through the eyes that they want to... I just figured y'all was tougher. No, we're definitely not tougher. Come on. No, you probably get in a fist fight and shit. Myth. It's a myth. Bro, I just, I'm not even trying to clown. I just heard you got in a fight. I heard you got in a fight with a kangaroo. <laughs> <laughs> Did you fight a fucking kangaroo, Eric Banner? He tried to fight me. What I, happened? I tried. I desperately tried to avoid fighting, and he was big. He was taller than me, and he wanted to kick me out of his valley and where, he, wait what were you doing i was i was camping by myself and uh, i was on a motorcycle trip and this dude came after i'd set up and started headbutting the tent and wanted me out of there and i was like i'm not i don't want to you know you just just set up your tent you've blown up your mattress you don't want to take that thing down and move you don't want to yeah, so then what'd you do well it was like a, a standoff between the two of us for about two hours did you swing on him no no, because he, he could have taken me. He would have fucked you up. It have, absolutely. They got claws. Forget about the version you see on, you know, Animal Planet. I saw the shit. one where the guy squares up with the yeah. fucking kangaroo and hits him with a two-piece. How is it they know how to box? They literally know how to box. Yeah. No one's taught them. They're just, they're just born knowing how to, how to throw a left and a right. How, did, how is that possible? They've never even seen a boxing match. Eric Banner, your second... The, that was probably the worst answer before the, the no one knows how to fucking make mistakes. You guys are fucking tougher. You went to fucking... You just go camping on your own and fight kangaroos? Like, <laughs> Americans don't do that. Like, we don't do that shit. And the ones that do don't go into fucking acting. <laughs> We're like, ah, you, you're, uh, you're going up against drama uh, school guys. Uh, and you're out there fucking fighting kangaroos on, on motorcycle well, trips. Well, I did my best not to fight the kangaroo. Let's put it that way. How scared were you? I wasn't, you know, I was like, I was vaguely intimidated. The thing that was amazing about it was when I realized that he was not intimidated, there was this look and I, and I realized there was no one else around to share it with. I knew he had my number, and I was like, "This is pretty. This is pretty amazing. This is like as primal as it gets." You know, his stories like you meet a tough guy, and they like stare you down. Yeah, and he knows that he can whip your ass. This was like next level. This was like animal versus humans. Like, I, if I want to, I will use my hind legs and I will rip you from chin down to the groin. Like, I've got you. And and it was so. It was that moment. It was kind of beautiful. You know. Did you have anything in your hands? No. You were just bare. I had a very small pocket knife, which was nowhere near me. Um, so I just, I, you know, I just had to had to wait it out. And how, many, wait how out. many hours was that? A couple of hours. Fuck that. Yeah, but I didn't take the tent down. I didn't have you to stayed. move it. I, st I had the shittiest night's sleep Did I've ever had Did you piss in my life. all around it to mark your territory? Yeah, but I think that's what pissed him off. The peeing? I think so. He smelt you. I think I was under his tree. Yeah, he probably pissed all over this tree and like, who the fuck is this guy? Yeah. With his air mattress and motorcycle. <laughs> Fuck him. That's fucking crazy. You're like a walking stereotype. No, I've never met a fucking... You're like, yeah, yeah, of course I fought a fucking kangaroo. You ever eat them motherfuckers? I have eaten kangaroo. How will they taste I, like? Gamey? It's a bit gamey. You just got to make sure someone knows what they're doing when they cook it. Um, you need to marinate it. Um, but it's very lean. Very yeah. lean. No shit. Yeah. yeah. I'd eat a kangaroo. You don't eat a koala, but you can eat a kangaroo. They serve koala too? No, you can't eat. It's oh. protected. They're slow motherfuckers, those koalas. They're easy to catch. Yeah. But they got claws too. You know, they'll hurt you. That's the other thing about Australia. Everything in Australia will fucking kill you, dude. Like even the platypuses. That's, well, the, they got the little stingers can... on the back of the fuck. They, they look bitch made, you but they got stingers. Australian nature. Not many people know that about the platypus, but you don't see them. I've only ever seen one platypus in the wild when I was a kid. Very hard to find. Very hard to spot. Well, did you grow up in the city, or were you, in, or were you a country dude? No, city, city, city yeah. slicker. What was that like getting a lot of fights and shit, or with... well, playing football? Yeah, not so much on the street. Aussie um, rules football. Aussie rules football. Yeah, that's like. Kind of like it's soccer and fucking football mix, right? It's more like Gaelic football. We don't have helmets. Is it like rugby-ish? Similar, but uh, more kind of hand and foot skills than rugby. Um, so it's like a cross between 
soccer, basketball, and, and NFL is the best description. Um, but you, we don't wear pads. We don't wear helmets. It's 18 aside. The game barely stops. You've got to be good at everything. There's no specialist. It's like you've got to be able to kick both sides of your body. You've got to be able to jump. You've got to be able to scrap. You've got to be able to tackle. Do you think that, do you think that is the most well-rounded athlete? I, 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 honestly, I think they're amongst the best athletes. Do you yeah. think, and we'll go over, do you think that there is less concussions there because there's a lack of pads and people are more aware of how they hit? No, we, ha- we have a big concussion problem too. Oh, fuck, I just blew that whole fucking, I had a whole theory. Did you, how many times you hit, you had your bell ringed? I, I actually didn't. Really? I, yeah, I had a few fingers broken, but I never I never got concussed. Um but it is a bit of a problem because also it's kind of that macho thing that you know you you're taught that it's it's brave to go back with the flight of the ball and not turn around and see who's about to knock you out and all that sort of shit so a lot of guys do probably get more concussions as a result of the way that they play not particularly smart because they don't want to be seen to be shirking the tackle or right. taking a glance before they before they get crunched you have your heart well, you're going to get torn apart by your teammate in the post-match, you know, review. I mean, yeah, you you were in Munich too, weren't you? you yes. You're in all the fucking awesome tough guy films. Do you miss Some. comedy? Uh, I do. I do. Do you? Are you ever like, can I just be in a rom-com? <laughs> Maybe not a rom-com, um, but I got to do, yeah, like you say, special correspondence with Ricky Gervais, which was awesome. You know, and that's the worst part about it was I didn't even check you out because you weren't killing anybody. Uh, Isn't that well, some asshole shit? Hang on, I'm trying to think if I do. No, I don't kill anyone. I'll though. check you out anyway. Now, I, 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 but I, I do, I do miss a sketch comedy a bit. Yeah, because my brain still thinks like a, a sketch comedy writer. I still see each day in like four or five sketches. You would appear prominently in a sketch if really? I was on air tomorrow night. I would do my best. You do impressions. I do. I used to. You used to. Yeah. You, you may or may not appear tomorrow night if I was on a schedule. God, I hope I, I. I hope you. I, I would love to hear your fucking. Uh, I would love to hear you try to do a Jude, because it's a fucking mixture. It's a mix. What's the mix? What's the mix? I'm from Michigan. Right. My old man's from uh, like outside of Boston, Worcester. Okay. So it's like country, Michigan, hoodish, all okay. smacked together. Yeah, it is. With a, a gang a, of fucking uh, cigarettes. Okay. I quit smoking. It kills your dick. Right. I got the dick of a 17-year-old now, Eric Banner. That's amazing. Thank you. Thank you. That is truly commendable. It's not easy, but you just got to (laughs) try. You just got to fucking try. You did Columbo. You don't have to do Columbo for me, but like that's what I've read in the notes that you did fucking Columbo. Uh, I, I think I did back in the day. Yep. Did you ever have a favorite? Um... You know, it, it it was whoever was whoever was uh, m- kind of like SNL. Whoever was most up needing to be speared would be speared that week. You know, so have uh, you ever met any of the people that you've in Australia? Yeah, I used to, it's a it's a small business. You would always come across people that you put shit on, and they would always try and pretend like they saw the funny side of it, even though you knew they were really pissed off. Um, so they would always be you know polite about it, but you know they're seething. Really? Yeah. That's that's what that's that's when you know you're really fucking popular. No one wants to be had the piss taken out of them. I don't know. I think it'd be kind of funny if someone clowned me. I'd be like, I made it. <laughs> right now I can't. Yeah. Right now I just get ignored. I'd be like, hey, I fucking made it. Like that's like if you get shit on on South Park, you're like, you fucking made it. Yeah, dude. that's true. That's true. Like that if call yeah, that's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah, Eric Banner. If you fucking go on the next show and you're like, "Hey, I'm motherfucking Jude," I'd be like, "Yeah, dog, Eric Banner did a Jude." I wouldn't even be mad, bro. I wouldn't even be mad. Your new movie is about being in prison. It is. Did going to visit fucking Chopper in prison help you with this? Uh, I mean, I guess it took it took the shock out of it because we literally we filmed in a maximum security prison in Cape Town called Polesmore. How fucking hoodie was that? Cape Town, how fucking grimy was that, bro? Do you know what? It wasn't It wasn't too bad. Uh, actually, it was quite nice, but um, <laughs> the, the prison side of it was... was the water's very good. Know, yeah, well, that's a whole other situation now, right? They're running out of water. Um, but working in the prison was an eye-opener, and we had a lot of ex-offenders working with us. And How was it an eye-opener? Uh, well, it's not a film set, yeah. you know, and... 
you are aware that something could go wrong. They tried to appease us by letting us know that the right squad was a floor below us. I mean, I, but something tells me that by the time they arrive, things might be a little over. But um, didn't, you know, that was meant to be the peace of mind. How close did you get to any of the actual prisoners? Did any of them try to like buddy up with you or anything like that? Uh, the closest we would get was they would blow a whistle, would have to stop filming, turn around, face the wall, and they would march people who were coming from one wing to another behind us with the dogs and stuff. No shit. Um, and I was in a jumpsuit because I was playing a prisoner and, and and a couple of scenes we had, you know, the real dogs and I'd have to, you know, walk near them to do something and then at the end of one take, the handler said to me, uh, just be aware, like, don't get so close to the dog and I'm like, you kidding me? The dog doesn't know who I am? Like, and then he's like, well, you're in a jumpsuit. He sees like, that suit. He just sees the orange suit. Yeah. yeah. Like, he didn't even read the call sheet. He didn't even know about your impressions. No. He was like, this, this, he didn't give a fuck about Colombo. He, he, he was, was going to eat like your ass up. just fucking kangaroo. He couldn't give a rat's. Fucking Eric Banner, y'all. Uh, star of everything. You've been doing this shit forever, man. F- fucking just crushing it. And, uh... Did, I didn't even realize that was Forrest Whitaker that you were with. They, they, oh, that amazing. fucking nose they put on him, I didn't even recognize him. Amazing. Yeah, he, he does an incredible uh, transformation into Desmond Tutu. Um, it is. It's a, He's an amazing actor, and it was amazing to work with. And it's, Yeah, total transformation. The Forgiven, it comes out March 9th. That's everywhere. It's 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 a, really a pleasure to meet you. What was Chopper like? What was Chopper? What, you, what was Chopper like? I gotta ask you. What was he like? He was as you saw him in the film. You know, he was a bit of a chameleon. He was a bit of a changeling. His opinion of you changed depending on what day of the week it was. Um, he's he's no longer with us. Um, but it was a uh, yeah. He was a uh, he was a complicated complicated dude. He was good to me. You know, didn't kill me. Um, yeah, so clearly you're still start. here. Is, is, do you have a fa- do you have a favorite of of yours like a favorite piece of work that you're like this is my shit like this is my baby? Well, if it, as a movie goer, like if if you lined them all up and I had to buy a ticket in terms of like what's my taste, I'd say Munich would be the mu- the movie that would be the most style of film I want to go and see. As a, you as fucked a, everybody, it was it was that was Israelis just fucking yeah. everybody up. Yeah, <laughs> y'all fucking. <laughs> That's what we should have had on the poster. You fight the Israelis fucking everybody up. Munich. That that motherfucker went harder than a motherfucker too. So Munich is your number one. I'd say as a as a it's hard to say what's your favorite, but in terms of like if I've got to buy a ticket, yeah, I'd it'd be up there. I remember my homeboys. We got really faded and watched it on surround sound, and that was fucking intense. <laughs> I was on a lot of ketamine, so I didn't understand what was happening. It was just very loud. <laughs> and people were dying. And I was like, I don't want to fuck with with Israelis. Did you did you talk did you meet the Israeli army and shit like that? Uh yeah, I met a few people. It was some interesting uh pre production meetings. You yeah. must get to meet a lot of Oh, it's the best part of the job. That's it. Doing the, best the research. Part of the job. Research is the the my favorite part of the job because you get you get the key to the door man it's like you get access to the most interesting people who are more than happy to help you out who want to share their story who want who want to see a good portrayal blah 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 so you do you get the best of everyone what did you learn from what did you learn from the fucking Israeli army dudes I'll fuck you up so quickly right now you wouldn't even know just they would just boom it would just no they cried McGraw me (laughs) They cry McGrammy. I'll be all cry. They do. They do. Yeah, yeah they yeah, don't play yeah. that shit, bro. Fuck no. No. You're talking a different language. I don't understand all that all that stuff. You got me. Oh, you don't... Just now? No, the oh. whole UFC thing, it's it's beyond me. You also race cars. I do like to race cars. Do, like, do, you, think he, do you think he could have beat Paul Newman? No, Paul was a real deal. He was a, he was a shit. Yeah. What kind of cars do you race? I like racing old historic stuff and sports cars. I haven't I took the last two years off, but um, endurance racing, sports car racing. Was do you got do you got a special like baby sports car that you just love to whip? I've got an old muscle car that I've had since I was fifteen, which I built myself and can still work on today. It's my baby. I'll never sell it. It's just uh, it's. Is awesome. it is it from all different kind? Like what, what's the model? Well, from the outside, it's it's an Australian Ford Falcon, like like the coupe that's in Mad Max, the XB. Oh, coupe in Mad Max. Yeah. So. Um, it's uh, it's called an XB Falcon Coupe, um, 
well, that's from the outside. Once you get under, there it is. Look how fast you are. Um, once you oh, get underneath, it's, it's pretty much handmade. You know, it's how fat? A, did you wreck that motherfucker? I did. I did, and I rebuilt it, and it's back on the road, and uh, yeah, it's purring. That's a bad that, motherfucker, that, that bro. Top right photo that you're looking at there, where it's white. That's that's me when I'm like 17. So I've I've had it forever. I've had it my whole life. Yeah. So you know how to wrench on cars. Yeah, that's what I do when I'm not working. It's um, my hobby. Eric Banner, this is why they pick Australians to be mus- to be tough guys in American movies. This is why, because you like work on cars, you drive motorcycles, you fight kangaroos, you hang out in prisons. <laughs> oh, this is this like, is my I, new. This that's is my your new answer. CV. That's this your is, that's your answer that's for the next CV. guy that fucking that for the next guy. You know my, you know what my fucking dream muscle car would be. What is it? I want to, I, I want that Buick Grand National, bro. I just ah, really like from the early eighties. Yeah, bro. Because you know I'm I'm from Michigan. Okay, like, that's I remember when that came out. It was that was pretty quick. It's like a Turbo Six or something, isn't it? Yeah, something it's weird. quick than a motherfucker, and it yeah. looks like a, it, it just looks Small. like a regular fucking car, and yeah. then it'll fucking fuck you up. Yeah, that's and what they I probably, like about they, it. They probably held their value pretty good. You should have got one a few years ago. They're fucking, like, they're like 25 grand okay. now, okay. so. But I got a muscle car out here. It was all souped up with the Ram Air and all that shit. It's what a fucking it? traffic light every goddamn yeah. quarter mile. You can't even open it up. You know what? I got to say this, though. You get a good run on your freeways. You guys drive like fucking crazy on your freeways. We like, whip them shits. You do. And there's never a cop there with like a radar. Like you guys, it's a racetrack in Australia. Forget it. For you, real? Do, you do over, you do over 55 miles an hour. You, you're done. Are I you mean, serious? Uh, we got cameras. We got radars. It's it is the most police state. It is ridiculous. That's some whole you, ass shit. You guys shit. got freedom. Like I would love to own a muscle car here, sports car here. I mean, you just you guys rip it on the free. Good luck trying to sit on 70 miles an hour here. You're gonna get taken out. Are you are you kidding me? Like back in Michigan, like it's eighty and up, bro. Yeah. Like I'm whipping that bitch. Yeah. Well, same here. I mean, your yeah. fast lane here, it's moving. You, you need got to nothing go. to complain about, my How's, What's the fastest you've gone in your car? Uh, on that in that car, ooh, that's a tough question. Uh, well, we do kilometers, not miles. Did I, you I ever really... get scared? No. No. Bad motherfucker. All right, look, they told me that you got a heart out. I'm not allowed to talk to you anymore, Eric Banner. All right. Hey, this was fun. Thank you very much, Jude. Good to meet you. Eric Banner, you, it's, it's great to meet you. Um, I, I love your work, and it was really, really fucking awesome to be able to sit here and chop it up with you briefly. Thank you very much. There will be no impression, I promise. I'm a little upset about that. <laughs> I'm fucking, I'm a little disappointed, but whatever. You know, you can work on it. Get back to me. I'll tell you if it's good. Okay. Eric Banner, the movie The Forgiven opens March 9th. Go see that shit. Yeah. yeah. What's up? You are checking out the All Out Show with Rude Jude on demand. DJ Matthew Schreier. Got, yeah, that's I, it. Fucking didn't that's blow it. it. You speaking French. Look at me. We. Oui. You, you speaking French. Je m'appelle Jude. Je m'appelle Jude. Jude. <laughs> Fucking a man! <laughs> How much more pussy do you get? Like I know you're taking and I think, stuff, I but think like a lot more. And you're a good-looking dude too. I think a lot more. No, the accent a lot more. You were you were a model. But the key, the key, is to go where you are exotic. Yes. So if you take yourself and you move to France, you also all of a sudden you become an exotic motherfucker, yes. and your pussy right it just goes right up. It just goes to the roof. Exponentially to the roof. Because you're an exotic motherfucker. They're like, who is this country sounding motherfucker? Exactly. That's why you want you want to go where you are exotic. I know. I'm just, just, <laughs> I'm just regular here. Yeah, I'm you're just regular. Reg- exactly. Yeah. You, yeah. Could, you could have the regular or you could have the sesame seeds on top of the bagel. I love that. Yeah, you got to be even the sesame. <laughs> even the sesame got some bitches pussy wet. Just saying, <laughs> just saying that know. shit. It's KCRW every Friday night. Every Friday night. All right. So what we're doing here is we trying to get we're trying to get some cats cultured, put you guys on a new music that's not just rap, that's not just from America, that's just from all over the world, but still goes, still funky. Uh, we met we met at uh we we met out dining, but then we had a nice conversation at the Born and Raised party. That's right. That's right. That was fun. That was a fun party. I have. I was on a good one. Yeah, that was a really good one. They keep getting better and better. The Seti Hawkins, big up. Yeah, straight up to Born and Raised for bringing us together. All right, so tell me a bit about this record that you're going to play for us. This one is what I got from a a record, a collective friend of mine. It's from Guatemala from 1985, and it's super obscure, but they cover Thriller, Michael Jackson Thriller. Do they do it in Spanish? 
Well, you'll see it's doing a lot of steel drums. I don't think there's vocals. I think he might be vocals. How's Fuck that bass? Remember. How's the bass line on that bitch? Because the the thriller bass line was kind of the shit. You know what I mean? Like, it's you. It's funky as fuck. I think you're gonna like this. Guatemala. Yeah, marimba ecos chapines. Was that during the fucking that 1985? Was, I don't know what was. Was going that on? like during the war? Because I know there was like a crazy war down there in Guatemala, fucking each other up. I don't know. That would have been interesting if that was... If that was can, you, can you look it up for me? If, that, yeah, that would have been interesting if that was made on the fucking... On During the back the of the fucking Guatemalan Civil War. I, you know, I've been down to Guatemala. Yeah, how was it? It's fucking awesome. You get oxys for a buck a piece. I was like... Good food? The food was delicious too, but I don't know. I just was on oxys and GHB walking all around Antigua. It was and, fucking awesome. And women are beautiful? The women were very, they were good looking. They didn't, n none of them fuck with me. I was staying like, you know. You on the side? Yeah, I was, I was, I was friend zone. I, and, <laughs> yeah, I was just friend zone. But man. But so much can happen from the friend zone. Worst case scenario, you can probably take your way, way into some G's. When, 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 when was the Civil War? It ended in 1996. So yeah, that shit was going on from 60 to 96. So this was, this was, they made this during the fucking Civil War. They were like, we over this shit. We want to be Michael Jackson. Fucking A, dog. Fucking fuck this shit. I want to be Michael Jackson. But if you hear it, it's the marimba. I think he's got steel drums. And um, it's funny. It's on the cycle Exitos Internacionales. Internacionales. And that's the name of the, that's the, name of the fucking... No, it's, it's weird because the B side is Melodias Chapinas, which is, I guess, you speak Spanish? Melody. Yeah, but Chapinas, I think it's, uh, it's, all, it's all like... Um, um, Domestic music. Okay. And the other one, Exitos Internacionales, means it's it's hits from abroad. Okay. So they, they do a bunch of weird shit, but Thriller is the one that just... That was a standout track oh, for dude, you. Oh, dude. Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah, it's a one-tracker. You, If you can find this, you just get it for Thriller. And that's that. Yeah. Tell me the name again for people. Marimba Ecos Chapines. They know, they know no, nobody, know nobody's going to fuck with that. But no. I, I bet you if you do Thriller from Guatemala, 1995, yeah. you might find that bitch. DJ Matu Schreier, KCLW. Yeah, let me check it out. Check it out. Let's go. Yeah, check it out. Yeah, check it out. DJ Matthew Damn. Schreier, KCRW, man, coming in here giving cats culture. You're speaking French, bro. Bro, I'm fucking. I'm taking you to France next Menage time. Menage Trois, mm -hmm. French fry, man, I got this shit. You got this shit on lock. KCRW is where you can be heard midnight to three on Saturdays? Friday. Friday, excuse me. No, no worries. Um, And M A T H I E. You. You. It's the French spelling for man, Saint you Matthew. You make it really hard for motherfuckers to follow you. S C H. R E Y E R. Yeah, do you think I should stick to Mr. French? Is it easier? Fuck yeah, dude. It's easier. Just be like, I'm just Mr. French. Forget my name. My name is too complicated. F you put it underneath it. Yeah, start using my name when I'm. You want people 16. to follow you. This shit is a goddamn. Yeah. It looks like when you pull words from pull letters from Scrabble. Yeah. And then you just throw them all together. <laughs> yeah, that's what it is. That's what it is. Thank you for coming and in, in, uh, playing some playing some of that world music for us. I appreciate you. What was, the, right. what was the name of that last record? It's uh, Marimba Ecos Chapines from Guatemala. It came out in December 85, and it was a cover of Michael Jackson's Thriller. Thank you so much for coming in. That was good. You are checking out the All Out Show with Rude Jude on demand. Bump, bump. Shout out to DJ. Matthew. 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 I always fuck his shit up. You know who. My guy. And Eric Banner. Fucking cool. Look at that. Chopper, dog. If you haven't seen that movie, go see it. And uh, the new movie, The Forgiven. Prison flick. Can't go wrong with a prison flick. Name me a bad prison flick. Life was good. I don't give a fuck. What else? Runaway train. 
Another fucking classic. Blood in, blood out. Killing them. A prophet. The shit. Can't go wrong with the prison flicks, I'm telling you. I'm sure there's someone yelling at that, yelling some shit prison flick at the fucking... The Longest Yard? Was that any good? That was like The Longest Yard. Was that a football prison movie? I think I saw that. That shit was decent. The new one, not the old one. Oh. With Adam Sandler. Nah. (laughs) All right. Touche. Well played. But even that was like from a good one that they just fucked up. Hey. Dallas, I'll be out there not this weekend, but next weekend. Just know that. Know that. I don't have the info for you right in front of me. But I will be reading books and, uh, you know, signing shit and hugging fans. That's what I do. It's kind of my deal. So you don't want to miss that, do you? You should follow my Instagram today. It is one more Jude. I'm doing White People Wednesday. Pretty good. I got a couple good ones in there. Some lady dyed herself black or some shit. Gotta be careful. Yo, you start letting motherfuckers swap genders, man. We, you know, we'll freestyle anything. Everything's acceptable. One more Jude is my Instagram. The book is Hyena. The other book is Hummingbird. You can read them any order you want. You can get them on Audible. So we got coming up next, John. Johnny Big Face. Like the new $100 bills. Big ass head. He'll be doing the news. He's going to be doing the news. Johnny, Johnny News Boy. Don't go anywhere. This is the All Out Show. You are checking out the All Out Show with Rude Jude on demand. And now, it's time for News from the Chin with John Z. Matthews. According to a new survey, the average American couple has sex nine times per month. Yeah. Which translates to 108 times per year. One point. So wait, nine times a month. Yeah. Yeesh. That's a little bit over two times a week. I think that's that's just about right. That's because you jerk off next to your girl in bed, <laughs> like a fucking weirdo. Get that horny goat weed, man. It'll put a little pep in your step. If you fucked it your girl more on a she, regular basis, it still you, shocks me. She told you that. I just find that so strange. She told you that. She was like, John doesn't sleep on the couch. <laughs> Which I did and had been. John doesn't like, sleep on the couch. He sleeps next to me and he'll masturbate next to me and he won't have sex with me. Isn't that amazing that she did that? You finessing her, bro. You like a pimp. <laughs> I've got to talk to her, man. I wish I wish you. Oh, man. You guys are back together. Look at you. Uh, you can't get enough. Can't get enough of her not, love. That is not the case. Have you fucked her since you've been back? No. I, not once. He's a fucking lie. That, I would He's not a, lie. At this point, lie. why would I lie about that? You finger her? <laughs> no. You go dot on her. I'm, I'm affectionate. Oh, man. You're the worst. <laughs> John be finessing hoes. You, you, uh, Don't call her a hoe. She's you a, a lovely ho- person. You a hobosexual. That's what they call them, where you just just be with a girl so you're not homeless. You a hobosexual. She's a lovely person. She wants more from you, John, and you just won't give it to her. At this point, I doubt that very much. But yet you still stay at her house. Man, you're a piece of shit, John. Again, that's one way of looking at it. That's a good way. It's a pretty accurate way. I'm starting to come around to that idea. But yeah, you are a piece of shit. Put there. some dick in that girl every now and again. Nine times a month. So I, That's not even... Chris Mash is way more than that. I can tell. Chris, I doubt it. Chris was married. I think uh, on the weekends, at least four or five times on the weekend. We'd be lucky really? to get some on the week. So he doesn't get to fuck during the week because they work so much. So on the weekend, four to five times. You multiply that by four, that's 16 to 20. He's fucking just doubled the fucking average. 
So are we talking about like twice in a session? Are we talking like morning, evening? Just whenever you can fit it Chris in. Chris was busting mad nuts, bro. I can't. I'm good for one nut, man. I'm good for one nut and I'm done. But I, I'll go forever. But like once, like once I pop, it's done. It's a wrap. <laughs> Fucking. <laughs> I'm fetal position. Ugh. I I've never been married, but. I don't know. I, I thought every other day would be, isn't that? But you know, you get the kids. You get you get busy with the work. That's the problem. That's what it is. You got to make some time. For, make some time for that special lady. Ladies, make some time for your man. Can you guess? The, Stop uh, looking like shit so much. <laughs> wow, fellas, help out with the dishes. <laughs> help out with the dishes. It'll give them a little bit of energy. It'll, you know, they'll see that. That's like foreplay. Foreplay for married couples is you fucking helping out with housework. It's true. That's fucking foreplay. You want you want more? If your wife isn't fucking you enough, fold the laundry. If I just clean the bathroom without her saying anything, Blow automatic. Job. Yeah, he's getting headed off. Headed off at the pass. <laughs> now, 3%. You wouldn't know anything about that, you selfish motherfucker. I am not a selfish lover. <laughs> You're just selfish. <laughs> you, you don't want a girl. You want a mommy to take care of you. <laughs> that is not true. I've seen you. That is not true. Everything about you, you just want someone to take care of you. Mommy. That is fa- completely untrue. Give me your, give me more fucking All 3% right. what? 3% claim that they have sex a minimum of 30 times a month. I don't believe that. 30 times? So 3%. 3% is that, fucking once a that's day. That's just every day. How, it, how deep into the relationship are they? Like me and my ex, me and my first ex, I was young though. Every day. Every day. Yeah, but how long did that last? We were together for five years, broke up like a couple times in between that, so like fucking every day. I changed her. <laughs> like it looked different when I got done. <laughs> and that was back before I knew how to fuck, so I just was like it was all speed. It was just pound that shit the fuck out, go go. I mean not that pounding it out ain't bad, but you gotta fucking you gotta work on different speeds and shit. So they've got the average amount uh, in terms of time per week. Uh, average. All right. So if it's what is it, two point two five, something like that. Two point two five per week. So how how many minutes per week people? Are <sighs> I'm guessing about? people are spending ten minutes fucking. So that's approximately twenty three minutes a week. I'm gonna guess. They are saying sixty nine. So that's I'm, not bad. I'm guessing it has to do with. Everything. Oh, start to finish. Foreplay the whole nine. Not just not penetration. Okay, so you got. All right, so I was I was off by forty something minutes. It's not bad. Yeah, thirty five minutes or something like that. So thirty five minutes of time, making out, kissing, eat the pussy, do all that. That goes against the whole fucking. Didn't they say the average amount of time that people fuck for is ten minutes? And another study. Something like that. But, that, but again, that's intercourse. They're not specifying exactly what they're talking about here. But I'm saying, in my mind, what they're talking about here is just... What you do is cuddle. Cuddle for rent. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with cuddling. Cuddling for rent. There's nothing wrong with cuddling. I don't understand why everyone hates that so much. Finessing, bro. It's nice. <laughs> Come here, cuddle me. That's fucking nice. I like that. Tuck under my chin. What is wrong with that? Get under this chin of mine. Yeah, that's right. The chin will protect you. Uh. So one thing that people could do is create this, what they're calling a sex appointment. So you actually have to sit down and say, okay, we're going to have sex at this time on this day. And then I guess that's cool if you need to do that. I don't know. Like, I haven't been in a functional relationship in over 10 years. Or in almost 10 years. So I don't know how that shit works. Do you see that changing? I don't know. No time soon. Do you want to change that? One, I would have to change some of my behavior. I'm sure, like, my current G-walks are frowned upon by most women. <laughs> my fucking constant travel and drug use is probably, I'm sure they're, like, I'm sure there's not some fucking PhD student out there that's like, oh, that's what I want in my life. That guy. And they show that Saturday night at 10 o'clock, the most popular time for somebody to set a, set a time to... That's cool. You my my favorite time to fuck. 
6 o'clock on the weekdays. I love fucking at 6. 6 o'clock. That's so specific. Just, just, why, why 6 o'clock? Uh, it's pre-dinner. You can fuck for a while, eat you some food, bang some more, call it a day. Get to bed at a reasonable time. Still got a little bit of energy. It's dark out. Turn the lights on. Got, I, got, I got good mood lighting. I'll accept that. And to those people that fuck with your fucking with the with ESPN on the, in the background, fuck you, man. <laughs> Who does that? <laughs> Too much. How much porn? Haven't you ever watched porn? Like I'll watch like Arab porn, like the chicks blowing dudes with the burkas on their head and shit, or whatever the, the whatever the hijab. hijab or, right. It'll be, it'll be fucking Al Jazeera in the background. It's like, turn the fucking <laughs> shit off, dude. It's not fucking distracting. I like got caught up in the moment. I'm catching up. Just on. turn off the fucking TV when you're fucking your girl, you weirdo. I can't do it. I can't. It's, it's distracting. It kills them. kills my boner. I fuck the music. All the time. Yeah, I've got mixtapes. Boom, throwing them shits on. Bam. What about music videos? Fuck you, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. What else? There's this guy who is getting some attention online. He was disciplining his kid who got kicked off the school bus for bullying. And then so he's making the kid run to school and he's... Uh, First off, was he really bullying? Or was the other kid just being a bitch? There's so many questions I have. All right. Okay. We'll, dick. we'll agree that the kid was a bully. So the old man's like, we're not going to have that bullying. So then what do you do? Well, so then he has the kid run to school, and he's filming it and naturally posts it online because that's what people do these days. I fucking have a real problem with fucking people feeling the need to film their ch- film themselves disciplining their kids. I see this mostly with hood parents. Let's be real. Nah, are, are you gonna are you gonna trick off like that? What they, and then like just chasing like all you see is the shaky phone and she's just chasing a fucking halfway naked teenager around with a belt, whooping her. So he's ten years old. Uh, let's see, what's he do? He's making. Hi right, everybody, welcome to. You better listen to your dad. Two thousand eighteen. Oh, this guy's a redneck. Um, any of y'all know me? No, I've got two wonderful children, Hayden, my son at ten, and my daughter, Temperance, at eight. Well, my son Hayden has finally temperance. got in trouble on the bus enough to where he got actually kicked off the bus for three days because huh? he was being a little bully, which go. I do not tolerate, cannot stand, and therefore, he has to now run to school. Um, we're right about one mile from the school, so all week, he's got the experience of running to school. The good news is, hey guys, he keeps up a pretty good mile pace at six miles an hour so Not far. bad. Ten mile um, ten, ten. Yesterday, he was apparently a little rude for Michelle in the morning, so even though it's raining this morning, he still gets to run. Um, this right here is hey, just simple. Running. You know, ironically, since he's been running to school this week, his behavior has been much better. His pe- teachers have approved um, of his behavior this week. He hasn't gotten in trouble at school this week. Where hey, last week, that. he was just absolutely out of his mind. So Spending right some of that energy school, too. Simple parenting. This yeah, ain't killing nobody. Hip, like I'm all for this. Like I, I, even, I even see the reason it, he's, he's like trying to get parents on board to start fucking doing that shit, to start disciplining their kids. Here's something else that's not being discussed: is kids don't go outside anymore. Kids don't play outside anymore. When I was outside, yo, when I was as shit, dude. I would wake. I I would be like three. I would dress myself, put on shoes on the wrong foot, and be outside fucking playing before my parents even woke up. And and I I played outside every all the all the time. You have these children who don't go outside with all this fucking energy, and what happens to it? They're bouncing off the fucking walls. He's literally making the kids spend energy. He's disciplining the kid. He's making the kids spend energy, and the kids getting getting exercise. Yeah, I, I guess. But then now, look at you, you're a bitch. No, but but now all this online attention and it's just. I, I think. Look, yeah, I get it. That's I I agree with you. That's a bit like, yeah, we don't really need like, I don't need to see this shit. That you could you could have kept that between you and your fucking kid. If that gets more parents on board to start like having their kids go play outside. I think half I think half a kid's problems if they actually just went and played outside would be solved. They don't 
they don't expend any energy. They sit in front of their fucking... And they, they, get, they have energy. Then they spaz out and shit. They can't sit down in class. They're fucking bouncing all over the place. So what do you do? I mean, if you were You go parent, make them play outside. Just okay. You're outside now for an hour. An I, hour? I don't know. I don't Yo, know what dude, kids my, are doing. I used to try to go back in, in the house and my mom would be like, what, what are you doing? Go back outside. I'd be like, I don't got nothing to do. She's like, find something to do. And you go get a stick and you play with a stick. So I got a gun. Now I'm fucking playing pretend Vietnam. Because Nam was big back then. All, all, the, all the dudes came back from Nam when I was little. Yeah, you run around. You fucking find something. Tag, freeze tag, Chinese freeze tag. Fucking anything. Hide and go seek. Things are different. Walk dude. up to the store. Yeah. People are afraid that their kids are going to get snatched up. And this is as safe as it's ever been. So, but some people are saying that dad's a bully. So Fuck them. Ariana, what's your face here? Who's Ariana? I don't know. Just all these people are commenting. I'm Fuck Ariana. The comments. Fuck Ariana. Dad's a bully. Fuck her. Oh, you just you're disciplining your kid. He's a bully. I don't see anything wrong with him making his son run. I think it's stupid. Like I'm not all the way on board with the whole fucking videotaping this shit because then you have Ariana chiming in. Like these are family matters. Why don't you keep that between you and your kid? But yeah. Fuck yeah, jo- yeah, make the kid fucking run, dude. What's wrong with that? He chilled him the fuck out, didn't it? Was it effective? As far as I can tell. Short term, yes, right? So far, short term, it's been effective. Look at John. I, I know, it just it seems weird, but no, I understand. My dad was very strict. Your dad was very strict with you. He was. He so, never hit you. He would just be disappointed. I, oh, he was disappointed, guaranteed. But uh, he, he didn't hit me. Came close. Came he should have. He should have. <laughs> if anybody could have benefited from a nice ass whooping, as you. Lots of shouting. My dad would like, he had, uh, he he didn't hit me that much. He he was beaten severely as a child, so, so he, went, he went the other direction. He was like, I'm not going to beat you. One time he tried to hit me, and... Uh, he had carpal tunnel in his hand and just fucked himself up. <laughs> he was like, ah, ah, ah. He didn't think to get the belt. But that being said, I grew up. I grew up with black kids, and you know they would get fucking. They get. They would get ass whoopings. And I don't necessarily know if it worked. Any like we all ended up in jail. So like, there you go. <laughs> so, I don't know if hitting or not hitting is the answer. I, I would think, say I would say not hitting is the answer. I think no, I don't know. I think I think it's all right to hit a kid. What? No. Yeah, I think it's I think it's fine to hit a kid. I, sometimes a kid needs you. They need to be they need to be afraid of the fucking parent. They're too dumb to fucking understand things. Sometimes sometimes you just need fear. So what would that look like if you were to hit your kid? I never hit my kid. I never. I'm just saying, what would it look like if you're saying? Something I would good? probably fucking hit her. What? I'd probably fucking fucking whoop her. But I didn't. I I never felt the need to. Be, but. Yeah, yeah, I think it's fine to hit your child. <laughs> Come on. Look at what, look at face? what we've raised. Look at look at look at the fucking little assholes that have not been hit. Yeah, there's lots of dicks. They're fucking awful. I've never met a group of fucking more privileged little assholes that in my life. They're so special and mediocre at the same time. And I th- I'm not just saying it's just hitting would would make them better, but like they, they, that's one little portion of it. And I guarantee you, all my fucking Mexican homies listening right now, and all my black homies listening right now, and all my rednecks listening right now are fucking co-signing that. Like, yes, Jude, you're fucking right. Hit that fucking child. What a backhand! I don't know, spank him. Like I never, head. I never had to hit my fucking kid because I would just put the fear. Like any way you can put the fucking fear of God in your child, you need to be able to put the fear of God in your child. And and I'm sure like uh and you, you don't and you don't need to hit him out of anger. You need to be like a fucking like a surgeon with that shit. Like oh you did this now you gonna now this is about to happen. I, go go to the tree. No. Go to the tree. Pick a switch. <laughs> the, the pain tree. Go to the tree. Pick a switch. It it changed so fast. 
in like 20 years. You do that now? Do not listen to my advice. They'll they'll come and take your fucking child yeah. from you. Child welfare services. Yeah, and that's better. It's fucking ridiculous where we live. You can't discipline your kids. You can't discipline your own fucking kids. It's fucking ridiculous. And I'm with, I'm someone that didn't never hit my child once. I never hit her once. She turned it out okay. She was fine. I think her I think her grandparents whooped her. But like I never did. I just be like, hey, you know I just. Fucking, I flex on her ass. Fuck, hey, hey. What made her flinch? Yeah, I could be like, yeah. And my dad, like, yo, he had me shook, bro. Like, my dad didn't need to hit me. I was scared of him. He was a fucking maniac. I saw, I, I saw him in the house. Fucking, I saw that guy. He's been committed. Like, I was like, ah, I'm good. Let, let me stay on this. Uh, let me stay on the right side of that motherfucker. Yeah, it sounds exactly like my childhood. Yeah, it worked. One time I came home crying, some kids beat me up, and uh, he, hey man, what can I say? And then he went out after them with a bike chain and a baseball bat. Yeah, bro. He was... He should have fucking... <laughs> he should have taught you how to fight so you didn't get beat up instead of chasing after fucking 10-year-olds oh, with the bike chains. There's a whole group of them. It's a mess. Then you got jumped? Oh, it was ugly. How many people got you? I was a circle of them, and they Damn, were just son. passing me around. It was a mess. Yeah, that sucks, dog. Yeah. Man, I, I, I've, I've only gotten like jumped by like three people. Not, never like a fucking big jumping. A term that apparently we can use now, but they were all guidos from a neighboring town. These older kids. Mm. You, like my people, Italians? Uh, they were. Uh, That's what a guido is. Yeah, I mean, yeah. yeah sorry. I, I, I shouldn't use that term, but everyone uses guido now because of uh, Jersey Shore. But at any rate, yeah, <laughs> don't get jumped in a park. I'm going to get down with those racial epithets. <laughs> uh, that's a bunch of fucking guidos from Jersey Shore. Did they have arch eyebrows when they were beating you up? It was dark. It was fucked up. Where were we at? We're talking about Sorry. disciplining I kids. Of, I know. Damn, I John. Flashback. You know, damn, John got right. that. I'm sure you had it coming. They're like, look at this big chin motherfucker. <laughs> Head looks like a slice of pizza. Let's beat him up. I'm, I'm sure we provoked him in some way. Yeah, yeah. It did, probably didn't come out of nowhere. Yeah. Probably called him some guidos and then beat the brakes off your ass. And now here we are, 40 years later, you're still fucked up. <laughs> I think parents, within within reason, should be able to discipline the child however they see fit. And I'll take it one step further. A lack of discipline with a child is just as bad. You're raising little fucking monsters that I got to deal with. These little assholes. All right, go ahead. Bill McFarland, he's that guy who put on the uh, fire festival. Mm, Bill McFarland. Hey, sorry, it's the guy's name. Bill McFarland. He is no one of them guidos want to beat you up. <laughs> he's got a voice. Dicks. Hate those guys. They're probably they're probably real. They're probably failing at life right now. You're probably the winner out of all of them. Who else is on, who else is on the, the fucking hip hop show? Not them. <laughs> they're Bill, out there running a chop shop. Fucking girls they're watching. Animals. So, uh, <laughs> Billy McFarland, he... They were doing it for the girls. Maybe. They beat you up for the girls, dude. That was half the reason. Watch how tough we are. Watch me break my hand on this guy's stone chin. So he's that guy, that fire festival that was... Um, that was a fucking FYRE festival with like Ja Rule and shit. Right. He, and they were charging people how much? Like five grand a ticket? Oh, it was insane. They were hoping to get these these Instagram kids and they, out there. And they fly them down there and it's like a third world country. Right? Am I right? Yeah. They had like fucking... They had bologna sandwiches on styrofoam plates. Right. There were a bunch of photos. Oh, yeah, that one. Good. Look at that. That is the worst. That's like, they're literally, it's literally jail sandwiches they're giving out with fucking mescaline greens, which are my, which I hate. How Ja Rule got mixed up in this is so baffling to me. And one of, didn't one of the fucking Jenners or someone, like, there was like one of the, some famous broad got fucking tied up in it too. I have a feeling she was just one of the people that got paid to promote it. Well, that would be yes. tied up in it, huh, John? Jesus fucking Christ. So it was promoted as a two week event. In this island of Great Exuma, with a chance to see people like Blink One Eighty Two, Migos, and after they arrived, they just found this mess, and then it just quickly unraveled. Oh, that's just, uh, look, Look this that. looks like a refugee camp. It's Hell. bleak, with fucking plastic chairs, shitty tents. It doesn't even look like they're fucking anywhere tropical. 
That's bleak as fuck, son. So, but he is now pleading guilty to two counts of wire fraud and faces a decade in, in jail. Well, there you go. And he's saying he's sorry. I grossly underestimated the resources that would be necessary to hold an event of this magnitude. In an attempt to raise what I thought were needed funds, I lied about various aspects of fire media and my personal finances. And Yeah, he lied. Here we are. It's a fucking con, man. He should have flown his ass out of the fucking country. Damn, that's depressing as shit. There's a why is there a school bus in the back? Is that what they were transporting people in the Look fuck? At that. Yo, if I got off the plane after I dropped like five G's and they rolled up with a fucking school bus, I turn into that lady. Let me speak to your manager. I'll be like the white lady with the fucking short haircut. Let me speak to your manager, sir. The highlights. More video from oh, that's bag bleak bag. with the school bus still going. <laughs> Those poor people trying to make the best of it. Yes. An organizer, if you can call them that. What are they giving out? Fucking water? They look like refugees. It's crazy. It literally, if you were, if you told me that there was a hurricane and they were giving out water, I'd have believed you. That's what it looked like. So he's going to jail. Good. Fuck him. Anything else? Uh that's about it. I mean, I can show you a video of a guy. Show me that one video. Yeah, I want to see that shit. A guy in a bar. So, the- so this is a this is an example of a bad father. That is correct. So, hang on one second. Close that link. But this guy, this is out of Colorado. Colorado. Jefferson County Sheriff's Office. They released this video. It was a fight among three men, including the victim who's holding his. Where they at? Chuck E. Cheese. Uh, it's a. Let's see, if you ever want to get in a fist fight, just go to Chuck E. Cheese. You can fight someone's parent there. So it is the Crossroads Pizza and Wings in Pine. It's always some. Why? Why are they always fighting over pizza, dude? All right, let's see this shit. Play me the fucking thing. All right. All right. So. So sadly, there's no audio. There's no audio, so I get to fucking. The guy's holding this kid. Yeah. So what happens is. Uh, he's holding his kid, and there's some sort of. They're talking shit. Right. Someone's holding a child. There's a guy holding a child that's running up on somebody holding a child. He's all right. Hold on. All right. So now he's he's pointing at this dude. He's like, "Hey, fuck off, fuck you!" And then someone hit him, hit him with the child, and then he hit him. Oh, oh, he's gotten he's getting wailed on. Still by, holding the kid. Still holding the kid. For it but, gets so oh, much they're worse. fucking wrecking him. Look at those headshots. Boom. Oh my god. <laughs> oh, he's done. Oh, he knocked him out. Oh, it, it gets they, worse. They hit him with a fucking three-piece. Oh, and then there's more? There's more. It Damn, continues. it beat the shit out of him. I know. Boom. Oh, oh, they suplex. Did they just fucking DDT his ass? <laughs> there's four There's four of them. Man, I'm, oh, this, this is the country part of Colorado, guys. They, their country is fuck. Oh, they're wrecking him. Oh, and the knee to the head. Oh, and he's done again. <laughs> it's oh, insane. and they're fucking. Oh, oh. done. Bam, kick, kick. He's still conscious. Can you post the fuck? He, I mean, here we go. Oh, oh done, done. The way he right, snaps look. back. Jeez. All right, look. First off, <laughs> look, man. Look, hey, you're holding your fucking kid. Walk away, like walk away. I I, I told you this story. I was like, I remember moving away from fucking Michigan and being homesick, and I went back to went back to Pontiac. And I was like at the Phoenix Center at some fucking, I don't know, some fucking, you know, R&B fucking concert where 10 fucking singers are playing or some shit. I'm like, damn, I miss I miss this place. And then I watched a fist fight like that where it was a woman fist fighting with her fucking one-year-old child in her arms. And I was like, I'm so glad I don't live here anymore. <laughs> I'm just yeah. like... I'm so fucking glad I don't live with these fuckers no more. Like, I, you act how I love you, but I'm I'm so glad to be fucking out of that. Like, motherfucker, yo, put your fucking kid down. So it looks as though he, he put was, his child in danger and he couldn't swing at the same time. And he was taking shot after shot to the face. I got to give the other guys credit, man. Their fucking accuracy was awesome. They fucked him up and did not touch that kid once. <laughs> Pinpoint precision. To that guy, he was... They pieced him up. He got fucked up. Did, they, did he go to the hospital? He did. Oh, we, yeah. We, yeah. With, with serious injuries, but they don't say anything oh, beyond that. he was that. concussed. That guy got fucked up. 
Yeah, but when you hit something like that, I will you please post die. that? Yeah, I don't think he's gonna die. But no, like, but I would, I would expect him to die. I mean, those headshots with the knee. He got knocked out. He was knocked out once already. Fucking, he got knocked out. Fucking seven seconds into the fight. He was knocked out on his feet. They took the baby away, and then they just beat the shit out of him for another fucking... Man. At some point, just go down. He kept getting up and up. I don't think he knew what was going on. I don't think... Yeah, I don't think he was clearer there. He was standing eight count the whole time while they were fucking beating the shit out of him. Please post that. Colorado. Yes. It is posted on our our, uh, Twitter right now. At All Out Show. And if we can figure out how to put it on our fucking Instagram, we'll do that too. All right, that was the news. You are checking out the All Out Show with Rude Jude on demand. I want to thank you for listening to this whole fucking show. Oh, you didn't listen to the whole show? Well, you missed out. But you're in luck. If you pay for On Demand, you can go listen On Demand. Listen on your little phone. Listen overseas, I think. Got motherfuckers checking in from Iraq and shit. Shout out to all my people overseas listening. Bam, bam, bam. Alex is on the boards. Keenan helped out. Or Chris is on the boards. Sorry, Chris. Alex is the producer. He's like, what? I'm on the boards. If you would have kept your mouth shut, you could have made producer. Just like that. Just like that. (laughs) Boom. You would have just had to been the producer. If it came with the pay, I'll take it. I hear you, bro. I hear you. All right. Chris was on the boards. Alex is the producer. John's the other producer. Keenan is the associate producer. We got all these motherfuckers producing this shit now. You sons of bitches. My name is Jude Anthony Angelini. You can follow me at one more Jude. O-N-E-M-O-R-E-J-U-D-E. I'm on Facebook, too, but I'll never check that shit. And uh, Twitter, Rude underscore Jude. Heine, Hummingbird are the books. Grab them up. Read them, bitches of the shit. I ain't never lied. Missy Stones tomorrow and the pill mix. Let's go.